Today's video topic is all about weapons. I feel like I haven't really talked about weapons too much or made a specific dedicated video talking about weapons. You know, as like a general piece of equipment, I think they're very important, so... Let's go ahead and jump into it. At the end, we'll be taking a look at the most commonly used four-star characters and uh, giving you advice on which weapon they should have. First of all, I would say there are three main types of weapons. You have your damage weapons, you have your support weapons, and then you have your specialty weapons, which are typically signature weapons for like a specific character. And we'll take a look at all those. What you should look out for when you're going to equip a weapon to a character. Generally, if you're a whale, you're gonna have their signature like uh, Raiden with her engulfing lightning here. But if you're free to play, you actually have a lot of choice. A lot of four-star weapons are, I would consider, free-to-play. Yes, most of them you get from gotcha, but you can do gotcha as a free-to-play, just not a ton of it. And perhaps going for five-star weapons on, like, a five-star weapon banner wouldn't be the smartest thing to do as a free-to-play. I do have to speak somewhat generally about this topic because there are so many different combinations that are possible with each individual character and what their individual role is going to be in your team. So it, it gets a little complicated, of course. But yeah, let's just go ahead and start with damage weapons. Of course, there are also sub DPS and support DPS where these could be suitable as well, but generally uh, they lead more on support weapons like uh, Skyward Blade here with its energy recharge. But something like the Black Sword, while it's not free to play, I would consider it a damage weapon. Crit rate is a pure damage stat, and then it has a very good base attack for a four star weapon. Just looking at the two main stats up there, it's important to realize that all four stars are more or less created equal and then the same applies to five stars, just better than four stars. What I mean by that is you can see Sacrificial Sword here has a base attack of 454 at level 90, but 61.3 energy recharge. Over here in Festering Desire, it's also level 90, uh, but only has 45.9% energy recharge. It makes up with that with its base attack. So the higher the base attack, the lower the secondary stat and vice versa. So that was just an example about how these two stats sort of interact with each other, but I do want to touch on base attack. I've done this several times but a lot of people still don't seem to understand how this works. And since we are specifically talking about weapons where this is the main source of base attack, I think this is the most appropriate time. Base attack is very important for a lot of characters. Basically any you want to have a good amount of attack. It's really not just 510 extra attack. That goes up there to the 799 we see that Benny has. And this is their integral attack. It's part of them. And you get that only from the weapons base attack as well as their level. But you get by far more from the weapon. If we give him this dull blade here, you can see this white number dropped by, yeah, nearly that 600. I had to give him a different weapon which has some base attack on it, but yeah. The green plus 568 comes from artifacts, any buffs you have, passive or active buffs. And as you can see, that also dropped down by half because all those buffs and artifact stats are based off base attack. As you can see, now it's back up to over 1,000. So essentially, higher base attack means higher effectiveness from any attack buffs or attack artifacts, etc., etc. Outside of some buffs, like Bennett's here, he'll give everyone the same buff. It's only based on his base attack. But I mean, in general, you do want a good amount of base attack for your main DPS. There are a lot of main DPSs out there, but in general, you want crit rate or crit damage on your weapon as its secondary stat. Sometimes it can be different, like, you know, Shanling Crescent Pike physical damage bonus, that definitely works. In her case, the passive is what really makes the weapon great, but the unfortunate thing is there are not a lot of free-to-play weapons with crit rate or crit damage on them. All of the Battle Pass weapons have crit rate, which is great, but it's not really free-to-play. Uh, yeah, so I just looked through all my weapons and I'm pretty sure it's only Widsith that has Crit rate or crit damage, and it's crit damage. Of course, there's Paimon's Bargains. Um, these, I believe, come with attack, but every other rotation will have crit damage weapons in here. I personally don't really bother with them because I'm not free to play, but considering how short we are on crit weapons, I haven't checked craftable weapons in a while, so I'm going to make sure there aren't any there. Nope, not a single one. I never realized how limited the crit weapons are. Yep, just look through an archive. It's literally just Widsith of the four stars that has crit damage. None of the four stars have crit rate outside of Battle Pass. It's a little strange that I'm just now noticing this. And yeah, while crit rate, crit damage, it's just stats, right? But they're like the most important stats for damage and they're upon the hardest to get. Both stats, crit rate and crit damage are confined to one single piece, the circlet. Yes, you can get it from substats, like you can get every other stat from substats, but it's still incredibly hard to get. It. So if you're strictly free to play and don't want to buy one battle pass for a crit rate weapon for your main DPS, then I would recommend saving up for a Black Cliff weapon when they come back into the store. They're always red and black, so you know you're not going to buy the wrong one. And they'll always have a crit damage main stat. That is, of course, unless you're running someone kind of a little bit more specific like Hu Tao. Dragon's Bane probably outclasses the Black Cliff polearm or whatever the equivalent is. Because Hu Tao really wants Elements of Mastery, so... 
that's fine. Of course, you can get enough Elma to mastery purely from substats, but that just means you focus your substats in other areas, not Elma's mastery. So that was a bit of a tangent, me realizing how few uh, free to play crit weapons we have. I'm sorry, free to play, that kind of sucks. Anyway, when we're talking about supports, I wanna go back to the earlier example we did with our uh, Singcho here. Once again, just purely focusing on the two main numbers, base attack and energy recharge. Forget about the passives for now. Would Festering Desire be better? I say no, even though I was harping on, you know, base attack being really important and all that. Singcho is a support. I don't necessarily need him to do a bunch of damage. I need to have his burst ready whenever I need it. And the extra energy recharge Sacrificial Sword gives me is more valuable than, you know, 60 extra base attack or whatever it is. Because in my team, Singcho's role is not to deal damage. He's to apply the wet status. Naturally, if your supports can do a good amount of damage, excellent. Perfect. That's great. It's just his highest priority is being able to get his burst. Energy recharge is a very popular stat for support weapons. If they are burst focused, you can't go wrong. Uh, there are some supports, rather call them sub DPSs or burst DPSs that don't strictly classify as main DPSs, but in that case, you know, a crit rate or a crit damage or an attack percent weapon would be useful too, and then you get their energy recharge elsewhere. So then we have specialty weapons. The main one that comes to mind is Calamity Queller here. Um, I hate specialty weapons, honestly, and they've been doing it more and more hardcore lately. Like, for me personally, it doesn't really matter, because since a while now, and probably going into the future, every new character I summon gets their signature weapon anyway, and it's like, yeah, perfect for them and whatever. But it just feels a little suck, you know? For it to be tailored so specifically to one character that it's average or worse for everyone else. Like, I know Calamity Queller can be used all right on Shao. Firstly, that's basically it. And secondly, it's still not as good as other weapons. Then we have Staff of Homa. Mm, good old OG Staff of Homa. Use it on anyone, doesn't matter. Has the crit damage stat, has attack bonus based on HP. Everyone has HP, it just works. Haran Gapakufutsu, the newest uh, signature weapon is in a similar vein. Perfect for Ayato. I literally can't even think of anyone who would use this. Yeah, not really. Everyone else does more damage with charged attacks. I don't know. It, it would be kind of like a, a equipping Gladiator and then forcing yourself to do normals. I did that a lot with Kaching back in the day and uh, yeah, she doesn't have a Gladiator anymore. I mean, we also have like the non-signature weapons, like the uh, Skyward equipment. These are the OG weapons. Uh, I think they get a little bit more hate than they deserve, which I mean is understandable. Like if Skyward Blade is your first five-star weapon, kind of hurts a little bit because you want that first five-star weapon to be good for your main DPS and uh, energy recharge typically is not what you want. We should talk about passives as well. There's not too much to say, but passives can potentially be even stronger than, than like one of these main stats because it is so specific you can get stats you can't get anywhere else, like attack speed. You can't get attack speed almost anywhere, maybe a couple of support constellations from some characters, but it's an incredibly rare stat. Of course, it just being rare doesn't mean it's valuable. Uh, it really depends on who's using it, which is of course true for all weapon passives. Like Redhorn Stone Thresher's passive isn't really good for many outside of Ito and maybe Noel. Granted, it kind of gets a pass because it has crit damage, um, a ton of crit damage, but again, as we talked about earlier, it suffers base attack. And of course, the passive isn't useless on anyone. Everyone has some amount of death and their normal and charge attack damage will be increased by 40% of it. But there's really not much to say about passives. Do your best to read and understand them obviously and make sure they're gonna be beneficial to your character. But yeah, like I said, they're all unique and I can't just say one thing or another. But what I'd like to do here at the end, um, this was actually a bone suggestion, was to go through what I think are like the most commonly used free to play characters and give you my weapon suggestion for them. The alley flash is actually kind of insane because it's base attack goes up higher than a lot of five star weapons. Uh, Skyward Blade here has 608, Alley Flash at level 90 has 620, and base attack is the most important stat for Bitney because that's what his buff scales off of. Sing Cho is super easy, Sacrificial Sword, period. Shaomling is another pretty popular character, but I'm pretty sure she's mostly used as a burst DPS, in that case Crescent Pike. This is definitely more for main DPS Shaomlings, but I'd say most typically you'd be going with um, the catch. I do not have this right now, but here it is. I've just been too lazy with fishing. Um, but this is the very essence of a free to play weapon. You just do a, a, a lot of fishing to be fair, but still not even a single primo gym needs to be spent to get this one. And it's actually really nice, especially for Shanling. Even for Raiden Shogun, it's like one of the best, if not the best free to play options as far as I've heard. Do people unironically use Lisa? I've actually seen some pretty impressive things for my level 50 Lisa. I'm just 
Not sure if people actually use her, but yeah, Widsith. Basically, every damage-focused Catalyst user is going to have Widsith as your free-to-play option. I'd probably need to do a comparison with like Dota Go Tales or something. Maybe Klee would benefit more from that because it's kind of her book. Although I still can't imagine, like, Widsith is a little RNG, but any of the buffs you get are in pretty insane. And then it has crit damage as its main stat. For Kaya, I'd probably say Favonius. Um, it, he generates some extra particles. Energy charge is good to get his burst up. That's generally what people use Kaya for, his burst. So, you know, extra energy here, energy recharge. It's just a nice energy generating weapon. Pretty sure a lot of people use Fischl these days as a uh, sort of support sub DPS sort of character for extra damage and reactions, so on. And I think Stringless in this case is going to be your best bet. There aren't a ton of good free to play great swords for our Beto here, but um, Beto's a bit of a hard one, honestly. Oh, I almost forgot. There's actually a pretty decent uh, craftable one for Beto as well. The prototype Archaic. Very simple sword, has a good base attack, attack percent, 50% chance for 240 uh, attack damage. Still definitely more free to play than anything from Gotcha, but I still do consider every four star to be free to play in a way. But there are potentially some popular four stars I left out. Obviously, I left out your favorite in particular on purpose because I don't like you. No, I'm just kidding, but the video is probably getting pretty long by now. Everyone has a different opinion, I suppose, and I am accustomed to using five stars on everyone, so. I'm not the well I'm not the most well versed in four stars, but I really look through all the weapons I have and some of the ones I don't like in uh, Forge for example and try to give my best opinion on any each of the characters. Feel free to leave your own suggestions for them in the comments though. Um, but yeah, that'll do it. Make sure to tell me what you think in the comments down below, dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed it is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching and until next time.